Hello guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Anjit again. So we are in the process of discussing the questions which came in NEET PG 2021. So this is a 14 question in pathology. I have created single single videos so that it's easy for you to look at them. Fine. So without much delay, we'll go back to the question. It was a simple question. So what you're going to do is we are going to discuss something regarding with the chap, uh, with the topic pneumoconiosis. Fine. And given a heads up of what the question is about. Fine. A 50 year old person operated for squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus. During the surgery, the surgeon noted a black nodule 0.5 cm close to the high lung hilum and sample. Hopefully, this should be at the hilar lymph node. I, though I'm not sure, this should be that, right? On microscopy, yeah, the question says that black pigments were found in the lymph node, right? So the surgeon thought of an hilar lymph node and he sampled that. Which of the following could be the most possible differential diagnosis? The clue here lies on only one fact, it's black pigments. I've repeated this multiple times in the class. Whenever you have black pigments, in any part of the body, especially lungs or in hilar lymph node, the first possibility is going to be coal, only coal, right? Melanoma will not cause black pigments. I've told this again, it's not going to be melanoma, it is going to be your anthracosis only. That's my first possibility for any black pigments. So generally, we I have told two things because very few pigments are black in color, predominantly are brown in color. Melanin actually is brown in color, it's not black in color, fine? So when you come to black pigments, I keep this as a dictum. Mostly this will be either of these two. Black pigments, if you're going to have in the lung, my possibility is my coal or an anthracosis. That's my first possibility. The same black color pigments is in liver. We do have a differential diagnosis, which is Dubin-Johnson syndrome. Because in Dubin-Johnson syndrome, there's a problem in the export of proteins from the hepatocytes to outside. So what happens is there are a few things like your lipomelanin, which gets metabolized, is not able to get exit. So they get stored inside and becomes black in color. These are the two possible black color tissues which I can see in microscopy. I want you to remember this always, fine? So with that basic thing itself, I can know that it's anthracosis, right? So anthracosis is a type of pneumoconiosis. I may not put into pneumoconiosis because you and me also can have it. It's, it's a very, very innocuous condition. It's not going to cause anything, right? So we will uh, spend a little bit of time discussing about pneumoconiosis here. See, when you have pneumoconiosis, what's going to be the problem? It's mostly we read them as occupational lung disease, right? So there are something called as danger particles. I just wanted to discuss about these danger particles for the only reason that there is a slight difference of opinion from the size of the danger particle in PSM Park as well as in Robbins. I am not sure what to go with it. I want you to know both of them and you, as per the exam, you're going to sit in the exam. Whatever is perfect, you're going to choose that, fine? So when you have these dangerous particles, anything like let's say if it's less than 1 micron size, fine, and 1 to 5 micron size, and greater than 5 micron size. These are how I'm going to divide any particles I'm going to inhale. If something is greater than 5 micron size, what will happen is they'll be caught up in the cilia of the respiratory tract. Let it be your um, respiratory or your bronchial tree, whatever it is. Wherever the cilia, it'll get caught up and it'll be expelled. We'll cough it off, right? So definitely you must have experienced this when you go into a smoky environment, a road with lots of smoke, the first reflex involuntary is cough, which means I have inhaled involuntary particles greater than five micron diameter and it's going to get caught up here and it's going to be thrown outside. That's my first thing, fine. So they have one to five micron diameter. What happens is, I'll come to this, these are called as danger particles. Less than one micron diameter, I'm not much worried for the simple reason. What happens is for these things, they're going to go into the bronchus, they reach the alveoli and they go into the blood. I don't have any problem here, right? So they reach the alveoli and they go into the bloodstream. When they go into the bloodstream, I don't mm, worry much because most of them will be excreted by a kidney. So whatever is going to come outside, is going to go outside. It will not stay in particular thing because they are very, very tiny to stay in any part of the body. I don't have much of a problem here. When I have these guys, these are my danger particles, one to five micron diameter. What happens is, these will stay back in the alveoli. That's my major trouble. When they stay back in the alveoli, see, let's take an example of a coal. Let's assume me. Coal is going to stay back in my alveoli. See, when coal stays back in the alveoli, am I right in saying that? It will not, it's not an organic particle. It's going to be in foreign body, right? Right. So my pulmonary alveolar macrophages will come them and eat them first. So do you think that my pulmonary alveolar macrophages can digest and destroy coal? It cannot. It's already a dead particle. There is no thing to destroy in coal. It's already a dead one, right? So what happens is this will become activated. 
whenever my macrophage is not able to destroy it becomes activated forms an activated macrophage so do you see the link between this and inflammation chapter yes right so when this activated macrophage is there it's going to cause inflammation it will form a granuloma all the granuloma and pneumoconiosis are nothing to relate to the organic material it's totally a dead material i'm going to go have an n n is for non necrotizing granulomas you have full amount of non necrotizing granulomas in the lung so this non necrotizing granuloma it's a chronic inflammation will it cause lung damage obviously it's going to cause lung damage that's caused by symptoms of your pneumoconiosis right that's about the simple uh, ideology of why a pneumoconiosis happens now we have different different types of pneumoconiosis we read generally the basic three ones the anthracosis silicosis and your asbestosis these are the three major ones we discuss and we'll discuss little bit about coal and we'll look at the silica microscopy as well because silicosis has a very unique finding which i'm going to show you in this microscopy so when you take coal you we generally must have read about different types of asbestos fiber the serpentine fiber the amphibole fiber even in silica we must have read about quartz and non quartz material lots of them right so we generally ignore the different types of coal i want to take time and discuss the different types of coal as well even in coal i have two types of coal the first type of coal i am going to call it an anthracotic or an there's an anthracotic coal so anthracotic coal pigments are used in your coal mining industries that's very important the usage is actually different here coal miners are exposed to anthracite or an anthracotic coal right so other type of coal is called as bituminous coal see this bituminous coal is a bit dangerous for me for the only reason bituminous coal is not used in coal mining industry it's seen whenever used in firewood cooking when you burn a firewood whatever it may be it's going to release coal particle obviously right that's also carbon right that's seen in indoor firewood cooking so this is my main problem when i see an anthracite or an anthracotic coal it's just going to cause coal workers pneumoconiosis i'll write cwps coal workers pneumoconiosis the bituminous coal is a problematic guy they don't cause coal workers pneumoconiosis doesn't mean that they are good what happens is this bituminous coal increases the risk of my lung carcinoma right so if you have a question will anthracosis lead to lung carcinoma the answer is no coal workers pneumoconiosis does not lead to lung carcinoma because they are exposed to anthracite coal which does not cause cancer right here there is no increase in risk of lung carcinoma that's an mcq as well for you guys but yes can coal cause lung cancer obviously i have a bituminous type of coal which is seen in firewood cooking which will cause lung cancer that's the reason a government is trying to push maximum to when liquefy petroleum gas so i can prevent the exposure to firewood cooking because when you have a firewood cooking it's going to be in a lower socio economic status the door will be closed very congested area in that area when the firewood is concentrated there's more chance of increased risk of cancer so we are trying to roll out with subsidies and we are going to uh, helpfully hopefully we'll avoid this etiology and avoid the lung cancer incidence hopefully in future fine right? amongst these groups right so they have anthracosis as i said that only finding for me for microscopy is the black color pigments whenever i see anything black color i'm going to call it an anthracosis anthracotic right so we have three stages of anthracosis we call them anthracosis a simple coal workers pneumoconiosis and a complicated coal workers pneumoconiosis right so the difference here is based on the size of the lesion and also the functionality of the lung see anthracosis is not much of a problem for me anthracosis you me everyone will have anthracosis if you are living in indian city for quite some years you'll have anthracosis it said that the first few breaths we you take in a city urban city you will inhale coal undoubtedly because of pollution that's all but it is not a problem for me because it is not symptomatic your hyalur lymph node my hyalur lymph node everyone's will have anthracotic pigment but they are not symptomatic and anthracosis is very very not because they are asymptomatic will it progress no it won't if i'm going to live in the city for the next even 100 years anthracosis will remain anthracosis it will not progress to the next stage of simple coal workers pneumoconiosis so when simple coal workers pneumoconiosis will come as when you work you are working in a coal mining industry there is the same anthracotic pigment but in a very very high concentration in a closed environment that's my problem here simple coal workers pneumoconiosis will have an altered lung function in other words none of the urban dwellers none of the people who are there in a polluted environment is not going to develop a simple coal workers pneumoconiosis right it will have an altered lung function but one good thing here is it's reversible that's the reason we had the factories act ruled in and you must have read about that in bsm every 6 months to a year i have to evaluate this because here i'm going to have very very tiny tiny nodules when i have tiny nodules here i can easily pick them up on next day give them a paid leave 
so this will automatically come back so once it comes back again i evaluate the patient okay no nodules in the lung x-ray okay let the person come back to work if i don't do that if you ignore or if you're going to bypass the lab it goes to my third thing complicated cold workers pneumoconiosis okay complicated cold workers pneumoconiosis we also call it an progressive massive fibrosis the fibrosis is the problem here whenever fibrosis sets in so the way to diagnose this condition on a microscope is i am not worried about the cold pigment here if it's fully fibrotic lung in between there will be cold particles for sure to say that this fibrosis was by cold now fully fibrotic lung it's going to be problematic for me because it is irreversible right it is irreversible even if you stop the exposure that's the worst thing here so if a person comes to an complicated cold workers pneumoconiosis even if he is given leave what leave even if he stop working in the coal mining industry still the person will end up in a lung failure will lose the life because of lung failure only right because of pulmonary failure these are three stages of cold workers pneumoconiosis the diagnosis is very very simple i'm just going to look at the black pigments in the lung if the black pigments are there like this image it's definitely a cold workers pneumoconiosis right we'll come to silicosis see here this lung actually this is an image of silicosis i want you to understand why i use this image if you look at this lung picture this also has black pigments yes so invariably any lung biopsy is going to have black pigments so i'm not going to just diagnose on that i need a history if i look at this microscopy alone without any special stain without any history i will call it cold only because i don't have anything but the same biopsy if you have a person working in a glass blowing industry or a sand mining industry sand blasting industry i will think of a silicosis the thing in silica thing is silica particles are birefringent silica particles cannot be appreciated on a normal light microscope if you look at this this is a polarized light so when i am going to use polarized light you can look at the light i'll just zoom it up it looks tiny 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 particles which are birefringent silica particles are positively birefringent so i need a history right they are positively birefringent fine right? i'll tell why a history is very very important if i don't have the history let's say, Uh, say that i am seeing only this image and you have an occupation history long term i'll just write anthracosis and I'll leave it if at all there is an involvement of the lung with the deterioration of lung i will classify into simple or complicated based on the size of the nodule that's all right why i shouldn't miss silicosis silica can result in a lung cancer right so that's very very dangerous more dangerous than my cold so i need to use birefringent whenever i am evaluating person who suspected silicosis that should come from the clinician from the clinical history right so one more thing which can be birefringent in the run i just want to take a detour and tell about that as well talc powder see talc is also birefringent so you must wondering who is going to inhale talcum powder right so talcum powder in my microscopy looks the same way like a silica particle maybe a little bit of difference will be there in the birefringence but almost the same way so talcum powder is especially possible in drug users you must be wondering how cocaine drug users it's not cocaine right they inhale cocaine cocaine adulterant is talcum powder everywhere it's going to be adulterated even cocaine is going to be adulterated right so when they keep on inhaling talcum powder cocaine will be utilized by my body talcum powder will not be utilized by my body they go and get deposited in the lung and over the long period of time not one or twice over the long period of time a chronic person who abuses cocaine is not thing if it, the cocaine is adulterated with talcum powder it's going to go inside and i'm going to have a problem right so that those that's also by reference right so we saw about two by reference in the lung we saw about the anthracotic pigment and we also saw about how pneumoconiosis is going to go ahead right that's with today's discussion and the answer was pretty straight forward pneumoconiosis do download the anacademy app and we are going to have series of discussion based for in your nsit exam in the upcoming month of october where we'll be discussing mixed bag of clinical questions and we're going to arrive to the diagnosis if you have any um thing in the if you have missed any important words in the recall which might change the answer please do comment below and subscribe and like uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video we'll be seeing more about uh, usmle and pathology plus for post graduates and for undergraduates as well on youtube see you soon with another video till then bye bye from dr ranjit bye bye